What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video, second upload of the month, trying to stay a little bit more consistent with these things. But today I'm gonna to take you through a full day of training, back and biceps, teaching you the cues I like to use when performing specific movements and showing you a little bit more of the thought process behind certain movement selection and why we do certain things. So before we get into it, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button for future videos and leave a comment below and let me know what you guys would like to see moving forward. So my protein is sent out there clear vegan protein in watermelon flavor. So sometimes what I like to do while I'm working or editing is just grab a quick scoop. This watermelon flavor doesn't taste artificial at all. It tastes pretty good. The difference between clear whey and regular whey is that when you mix it, it's kind of like drinking almost a juice, like an iced tea. So for 16 grams of serving, it's around 49 calories and 10 grams of protein. When you're dieting, it's great to just kind of sip on, have something on the side, mix it with some ice. If you want to give it a crack and save 30% off, click the link in bio. So I struggle with a lot of lower back pain, a lot of shoulder pain, just because growing up, I used to lift pretty heavy, pretty dumb with terrible form, terrible cues. More so recently than before, I've been spending a lot of time doing warm-ups to make sure that the muscle groups are pre-engaged, allowing for more mobility and better contraction quality. I like to start with, you know, two sets, anywhere between 10 to 15 reps, with around four or five reps in reserve. I also like to start sometimes with five minutes in the treadmill at five kilometers per hour, nothing too intense. Today being a pull day, we like to start off with rope pullovers. Now with this movement, a lot of people struggle with it. I like to pretend like I'm skiing almost, keeping the elbows tucked to the side and almost driving my chest through the rope and really focusing and contracting that upper lat region, taking your time with it, focusing on the negative, and again, pausing at the peak of the movement to improve contraction and engagement quality. Then for a second warm up, I like to do two sets of 12 to 15 reps of cable extensions just to keep the rotator cuffs nice and healthy. I find that this also helps with mobility. I have really bad shoulder mobility, specifically on my left shoulder. I get a lot of muscle tightness, especially when you're heavier, primarily because I'm sitting around all day most of the time. I mean, I do my regular walks, but other than that, I'm usually at home on my desk. For our third warm up exercise, we then move on to reverse grip lat pull downs. Now with this, I like to have my elbows directly in front of me and not to the side, better recruiting the lower lap region. Again, keep the tempo slow, really focus on the bottom portion of the movement to really engage as many fibers as possible. I don't really like to swing and I like to keep momentum at very bare minimum because our goal is to engage the muscle as much as possible and avoid any power leakage. Here's a clip of Michaela doing the same movement. Her range of motion is definitely better than mine. Again, I struggle a little bit. I don't know if it's because I have short arms or just my mobility just sucks but it's been something I've been struggling with for a while and you know I get it checked at the physio and stuff and do regular dry needling or at least I did in the past ever since I moved to Melbourne I found it difficult to find a good physio and a physio that works with a demographic similar to me now for the first movement of the day we do plate loaded rows you can either do this with a chest supported t-bar or any pin loaded machine our goal is just to recruit and contract the upper portion of the middle back one thing I'm trying to do more of is drink water during my sessions it's been a really bad habit of mine of going through an entire session and not really drinking much water. It definitely helps with training performance and recovery as well. So make sure you stay hydrated. I also started to use wrist straps a little bit more. And ever since I did implement this accessory, it wasn't to my surprise that my back started to grow a little bit more as we now eliminate forearm fatigue from the equation. So with this, again, our goal is to contract the upper portion of the mid back, driving our elbows through. My range of motion can be improved. Again, my mobility is not the best. My flexibility is not the best and it's something I've been regularly working on. But driving through the elbow, the weight to me was a little bit heavy to begin with. So as you can see, my form is not perfect. However, I am still trying to minimize as much swing as I can. Towards the end, my reps did get sloppy. Now, I could continue to do that set and completely drive and shake. And at that point, it becomes redundant and the risk of injury begins to increase. Now, the, the only thing annoying about this movement is that setting it up is quite tedious. As you can see, Mikaela struggling to put on her wrist straps. I much prefer a chest supported T-bar row, but we didn't have that. Personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with curving your back forward to increase that range of motion. And I like to pause at the bottom dead stopping to kill the momentum and again driving with my elbows back as you can see I am using a little bit of swing the weight is a bit heavy I'm not feeling super strong this week and that happens I, I don't know why I think my lack of sleep despite eating a lot more and being in the quote-unquote off season I should be a lot stronger but my engagement quality has been improving quite dramatically from a week-to-week -week basis allowing me to load more of the actual weight on the targeted area we do two sets of that a back off set starting with 10 reps and then proceeding with around 12 to 15. Then for a second movement of the day, we have a low row variation, targeting the lower region of the lap. I'm not a huge fan of unilateral movements, 
just because it takes so long. But from a reward center of view, although it may not be enjoyable, there's a lot of benefits to performing unilateral based movements, specifically when you have imbalances. Now, our main goal for this movement is to target the lower portion of the lats. Notice the angle of pull of my elbow. I'm trying to drive it closer to my hip and trying to contract the lower portion rather than the upper portion of my lat. I like to place a lot of emphasis on tempo. So really focusing on the negative and pausing at the bottom for one to half a second and the same at the top of the movement. Now, instead of this, you can do unilateral double rows or even cable rows. Again, we're using straps to eliminate forearm fatigue. It's a smaller muscle group, so it tends to give out a lot earlier than the back. Then for our third back movement, we have hammer strength plate loaded rows. We're performing this slightly differently. We are currently doing around three and a half plates, really focusing on the negative of the movement as well as pausing at the top of the exercise. The goal for this movement is to contract the upper portion of our lats, try to get that wider look. Perform at a reasonable range of motion whilst keeping your lats engaged. Be careful when setting it down because if it's a little bit heavier than you, you tend to launch forward. So have a spotter and here we have Michaela also doing around three and a half plates. To be honest, I don't know how to she keeps up with my weight, but I mean, hey, it is what it is. So she's trying to maintain an upright position using the padding for support and stability, driving the elbow to contract that upper portion of the lat as well. Personally, not my favorite movement for lat development. However, my coach did program this in. And when a coach programs a movement in, you can definitely question it to better understand. I've been focusing on my lats a lot the past year. So we just tend to cycle throughout different lat based exercises and focus on progressing each movement, then coming back to it in future blocks and phases. Because when you repeat the same movement for a long period of time, it's gonna become difficult to progress and progress. Sometimes it's good to have a bit of a break, do a different movement, and then come back to it in the future. So our main focus is to really blow up our lats. With this movement, we have three sets each side, doing 15 to eight reps. So our first set is 15, our last set is eight, using the same throughout each three sets and due to fatigue accumulation your rep count will naturally drop and then next week our goal is to increase the weight load another core area that i've been focused on trying to build are my rear delts my entire posterior chain isn't the strongest so rear delts back and hamstrings and i've been focusing on that for the past two years it's definitely caught up but it's taken a lot of volume to grow with this movement i see two common problems either excessive range of motion or not enough range of motion really focus on contracting your rear delt and when you feel peak contraction that's when that lift ends now in the negative portion of the movement try to avoid the plates making contact to ensure that tension is maintained. Now we move on to biceps. We have two movements, one focusing on the short head and one focusing on the long head. And in simpler terms, the short head is an inner portion of the bicep to make it look a little bit thicker. And the long head of the bicep is on the outer portion to help develop the bicep peak to make it look higher. For a short head movement, we have the bicep preacher curls. This is definitely one of my favorite movements. It kills the momentum, locks you in place, and doesn't add unnecessary strain on other areas. I used to do a lot of barbell curls with poor cueing techniques and it just ended up hurting my lower back. I love how this machine locks you in place and allows you to really focus on contracting the short head of the bicep. Again, focus on range of motion, contraction quality, and tempo. Keep your bicep engaged throughout the entire of the movement. Now for the long head of the bicep, we have cable drag curls. Something I've been doing a lot recently and actually really, really enjoy. If you haven't tried it before, highly recommend it. Really good movement for growing the bicep peak. Now for this exercise, you kind of want to place your elbows at an angle, rotating your elbows away from your torso. Personally, when I do this, I find my contraction quality for the long head a lot better. There's me chilling in the background and I don't even know if I filmed a set of me performing this exercise which is a shame because when i do this my delts are capping and then michaela and i practiced some posing some guy actually came over and asked if she was competing as of now we don't really have immediate intentions for competing it's not really on my priority list i rather focus on serving my athletes my students my clients because i find that whenever i'm dieting my mental performance really decays i become a shit person to be around and i'm just not as sharp so this took us about an hour an hour and a half to complete you don't really need to be in the gym for so many hours and you don't need to do hundreds and hundreds of sets we did two to three sets per movement anywhere between 8 to 15 reps and our rest time ranged from 2 minutes to 3 minutes. Sometimes 60 to 90 seconds, just depending on the exercise, but I'll be including all the information on the screen throughout each exercise. I hope you found this video educational and insightful, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you clicked that like button, even hit that subscribe button, and again, let me know what you thought of the video and what you guys would like to see next or what you would like to learn more about. That's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed, I'll see you in the next video.